Say it. Say what? Just say it. What do you want me to say? Say it. Come on, just say it. Say it. Say, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Say it. Say it. Please, please. please. Just, just say it. We're begging. Say it. Just say it. I love kids. <laughs> Alright, welcome back ladies and ladies with dicks. On my last Mr. Beast video, we discussed him using more CGI than Marvel Studios, apparently lying about the random subscribers he invites onto his vids, instead hosting damn near family reunions, having many family and friends secretly compete in challenges with actual contestants. They're not just there as innocent bystanders though, since they're also potentially rigged to win different competitions as well, basically letting everybody that was legitimately invited to ferociously feast on Jimmy's yeast ridden beast he hides in his pants. Because because everyone had their time, money they used to come out to compete, and hopes of winning utterly wasted due to them being scripted to lose from the very start. Which is highly odd considering Mr. Beast was defending his vids from being fake like Leonidas was defending the land of Sparta, it was a hill he constantly died on. We spoke about the possible illegal lotteries he was conducting with his merch giveaways, scamming away his child based audience, giving them small time windows to buy his merch during a certain time to win free money, only to keep switching that time around so much that I'm surprised this motherfucker didn't cause a nexus event. Many people People solely bought into his merch believing they had a big chance of winning free money that's coming out of Jimmy's pocket, but Jimmy just decided to run theirs instead, finessing the ever-living f**k out of the buck tooth balloon hat wearing toddlers that stole their parents' credit card thinking they were doing them a favor. Not only did we discuss Mr. Beast doing fake giveaways on his stream, he also decided to do fake signatures as well, promising everybody that bought one of his shirts to be personally signed by the Beast Man himself, even though five minutes after announcing this, one of his crew members openly forged his initials onto a shirt before horribly attempting to cover it up. His alleged controversy with his nightmare of a game show called Beast Games, which was about the closest thing we were going to get to a modern day gulag camp, starving the contestants, having their medications and necessities being stripped away like underwear, and allowing women to get beaten battered by men, all the while while Mr. Beach watched from a top view, smiling menacingly at the chaos below. Now, all of this sounds absolutely awful for the world's largest YouTuber to openly do. However, all of what I just mentioned is ironically child's play in comparison to the recent Mr. Beast allegations that's surfacing now. You remember in Mr. Beast's statement towards Chris Tyson, he said he was shocked to his core finding out Chris was a minor refiner, putting on this facade of himself to never in a million years see something like this coming. Well, even though he was exposed for being active in the same Discord server Chris was in during the time he was talking all sorts of wild to a child, but it's also been revealed now that he hired a registered flex offender onto his team that showed an 11 year old girl way too much Gucci. You guys can paint the picture, I gotta use certain words and terms now because YouTube is becoming the new co- Coco Melon when it comes to monetization. How all of this would even be discovered is when Dogpack would drop his highly anticipated part 2 of his Mr. Beast Exposed series, where during an interview that's in reality 90% of the video, they brought in a fellow ex-employee by the name of Jake Weddle, who aired out all of this towards the end where a person by the name of Delaware who was on the registry list for assaulting an 11 year old girl back in 2010 when I believe he was 16. This is the first time I don't have to clench my ass and say allegedly because this guy is a convicted offender who was on there for 15 years. But none of Nevertheless, he worked at the company for multiple years itself. So Mr. Beast was running some Vought International type of shit where all of our superheroes are just kid diddlers. Jimmy is the Homelander, Chris is Stormfront, and Delaware is the company's Black Noir. It's insane to think this semen demon was welcome aboard with open arms because the chances of Mr. Beast not possibly knowing what kind of monster he was was slim to none. In the video Delaware was featured in, he was forced to wear some Rey Mysterio mask to not reveal his identity. Mr. Beast himself called him by his nickname Delaware instead of any other regular name in a past video from five years ago called I spent 24 hours straight in an insane asylum, making it extremely hard to believe the fact Mr. Beast was clueless about this guy's monstrosity of a past. You know, the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. From what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, He's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew and because he'll be in videos. He'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around, and whatever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are in registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? You want food? He's eating this cracker.
He's after my hot guy. <laughs> Talking about you put investigators onto Chris, man, we need to put investigators onto you. At the very least, you decided to put that freak in a straight jacket, but it's remarkable to me that there's this high likelihood of Mr. Beast, the most famous kids creator on the platform, inviting a diaper sniper to not only even be a water boy on the fucking set, but a full blown manager for the company. This is like Casamigos hiring Bill Cosby to create the recipe for their drinks. I don't understand how Mr. Beast could even surround himself in that man's presence, let alone have him pull major strings within the company and promote his appearance in videos for millions of underage people to see. It's just flat out disgusting. And in my personal opinion, if Mr. Beast comes out admitting all of this to be true himself, then his career is beyond the point of recovery. This isn't some oopsie doopsie poopsie you let slip out in the wind. This is an irredeemable mistake you just can't come back from. I'm sure some of you don't even have to imagine because there's at least one parent out there watching, but picture your kids seeing these people as inspirations, forcing what? you to buy their products, watch their videos as they drool on their iPad, seeing them as stars they want to meet when some of them can't even go within 10 miles of any school district. You would be sick into your stomach about it, I'm sure, because this is supposed to be the largest family-friendly safe haven for everyone to watch, despite one of the members liking to look at a kid's crotch. Now, this would be furthermore backed up by the world's biggest moron, Jake the Viking. I'm convinced this guy probably hisses at books in the library like a vampire reacting to garlic, because he has the same brain capacity as a tadpole, and you'll find out why in a second. Jake took himself to Twitter to say Delaware is actually his brother-in-law that got him hired into Mr. Beast himself. He claims claims that Delaware sat down with Mr. Beast and his mother to fully go over his conviction, which I guess they just dropped the clipboard and said you're hired. Matter of fact, you can run all our charities to children now too. This is just insane. There's a Coco Melon felon on the Mr. Beast crew and a 99% chance that he covered up for him the whole time he was under employment. The reason on why I called Jake the Viking a nipless Neanderthal is because of what he said before revealing this, because prior to this he led a crusade against Jimmy for protecting Chris from being fired, saying ominous things like Jimmy knew. The silence is deafening. No no accountability, none. Referencing Chris, so let's get into this Elder Scroll of a tweet and why it shows he should be the last person to be saying any of the words that I'm putting on display. Here's the truth. Yes, Delaware is my brother-in-law. Yes, he is a RSO. When he was 21, a 16-year-old girl accused him and others of SA when she was 11. Delaware took a plea deal, that's why there was no jail time, but he still had to register. He was hired before I was and was actually the reason I got hired at Mr. Beast. Before being hired, Delaware sat down with Jimmy and Sue, Jimmy's mom, and explained to them everything. So yes, Jimmy knew, but again, this incident happened in 2010. Delaware was hired in 2017 to 2018. Delaware was also let go from the company before I was. Delaware was supposed to be behind the scenes manager, but in a couple videos, he was asked to partake because we needed people. He was reluctant, especially in the straight jacket video because of his charges, and that's why he wore the mask. Delaware's charges are set to be dropped this fall. He has been nothing but a good person, an amazing husband to my sister, and the best father to my two nieces that I could ever ask for. For. They want no part in this and just want to live their lives away from the limelight. I understand why anyone would be upset and frustrated over these allegations, and I do not blame them. Hurting kids in any way is completely unacceptable, but in this case of Delaware, I firmly believe he did nothing wrong and look forward to the day these charges are dropped. Thank you. You're, you're a fucking idiot. Like, you waited over six years at least to now tell us this when you were calling Jimmy evil predator protector a dozen times, praying on his demise, posting tweet after tweet, calling Chris a predator as well, when you eat at the Thanksgiving table with one every year. Then have the audacity to call him a good family man when he fondled with an 11 year old. No, if I found out one of my relatives was grabbing up kitty titties, I would do everything in my power to never have contact with them again. Last thing I might ever do is take them to a bar then make their Uber be a cop car. So for you to bash Mr. Beast all over endlessly for weeks makes you look like a clout craver because attention is the only thing you've gained from any of this. I mean, this is something only out of a South Park episode. I've had a couple days to laugh at it now, but it's almost impossible to not find this hilarious. All this damn time you were shielding your brother behind your back, taking him in like Captain America having I got your back Bucky ass moment towards a diddler, while you simultaneously try to fight and accuse Chris of being one. How could you not see the flaw or hypocrisy in protecting someone like that before deciding to make yourself be a main character online to take Jimmy down? As for Mr. Beast on the other hand, I mean this shit kinda runs thick because allegedly his mom was completely cool with an offender working with a children's company too? I mean this is just Nickelodeon happening all over again. You're quite literally putting kids on your videos in danger for even having them alone in the same room as one, but then going out of your way to hide his face with a mask like that wouldn't make him look even more suspicious? Some people will make the argument that, well, that was over a decade ago, people can change, or he was falsely accused, that's why his charges are being dropped. Listen, Jake was definitely trying to cushion the severity of what Delaware did because his charges aren't getting dropped. Most of the time that happens before a person gets fully convicted, let alone having that conviction held over their heads for 15 years. What is most likely happening is his charges are being expunged, which basically means the court is showing Delaware mercy for perhaps good behavior.
behavior over the course of years, or taking his plea deal Jake said he took into consideration to take his charges off because of the long period of time he served them. Absolutely none of it means he necessarily didn't do it or he's a free man trapped in a cage. It matter of fact just points to the opposite. He admitted to doing it by taking that plea deal. There's nothing in Jake's statement that hints towards him being falsely accused. Just him saying he believes his brother did nothing wrong. Mm, yeah, everybody. Predators are bad, okay? All of them need to be banished from the world, except my brother. He didn't do anything wrong, okay? Tripped over his shoelaces and inappropriately groped an 11-year-old to save his fall. Trust me, okay? What a world we live in. Congrats, Jake. You got the spotlight you've been desperately searching for just to make yourself look like an idiot. Now that we're over the high possibility of Mr. Beast knowingly hiring a sex offender along with his offender defender brother, Jake the Viking, let's go back to Jake the employee. The one in the interview who gave out the existence of Delaware and the impossible chance of Jimmy not knowing about what kind of monsters he was allowing on their team. Well, a little before he mentioned this, Jake would talk about the traumatizing experiences he went through while working for Mr. Beast, which includes him being part of this damn near Russian sleep experiment Jimmy threw Jake in, locking him up in solitary confinement for 30 days. Now, the big messed up part about this, along with many other things, is Mr. Beast promised him this challenge would be a cakewalk, the easiest thing he's ever had to do in his entire life, because there will be so many accessories or things to do in the room, like having a hot tub along with an ice cream machine, TV, games, all of that, right? Well, in reality, he got a room with the lights on 24-7, which resulted in years of insomnia for Jake. Cold showers, hot tub without a filter, an ice cream machine that was broken, which caused the room to smell like Wuhan fish market dumpster juice and fresh ass, having the room being freshly painted as well, so Jake was just huffing and puffing away, asphyxiating in Mr. Beast's little jigsaw trap. I'm Jake Weddle. If you, if you know me from Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos, sometimes maybe purposefully kept to the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time. Pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement, uh, but don't worry, like you only have to last like 30, we have like a video. They were pitching it like a, oh, it's, at first it's gonna be like a luxury vacation. You're gonna have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine. And like part of the video is gonna be you deciding like, what, what, what items am I gonna get rid of, you know, today? And it's like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only gonna be bad for the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first, it's gonna be like a breeze for most of it. And uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're gonna get $300,000 because it's $10,000 a day. And, uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know, which that's probably not good. You know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. A hot tub if not connected to a filtration system. Give it three days, it's gonna stink. And the ice cream machine, let's talk about that for a second. The ice cream machine has two modes. On, bang, and off, reeking of smelly, dairy, mildew, like, so I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. They weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like have like nighttime hours? You know, and they said no, because it would fuck up the time-lapse shots. The time-lapse of what, me sleeping? Or me not sleeping? Okay, I got no access to the sun. I got no access to the clock. I don't know, like, the, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep and I, I have insomnia problems now. Um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. And I go up to my friend, my, my, my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Out of all the videos Mr. Beast fakes, this one where he drove a man to insanity is the one that he wants to make realistic as possible. Mr. Beast learned from all of this too, because Jake apparently was the first contestant to the now public updated solitary confinement video where he actually delivered that contestant all the things he promised Jake. You know, at this point, I really want to know what Jimmy did with that private island. We need Tyler Rivera on the case. I think calling it an outright war crime is a tad bit of an overstatement. It's torture nonetheless, don't get me wrong. But I don't think you're going to see Mr. Beast be exiled for treason or thrown onto trial for it. It's just an extreme lack of care or empathy for the human subjects he uses throughout his videos. Many people were quick to be suspicious of Jake's bewildering claims throughout this interview because he wasn't technically forced to stay there or he could have just left at any time. As well as Jake coming back to even be part of anything Mr. Beast related when he got fired and mistreated in the past. I think what many people fail to realize or easily brush over is Jake explaining his poor upbringing and how Mr. Beast would dangle money in front of his face to press for him to do these ass nine challenges. This might be a reach to say, but honestly to the beast blowers out there, see how far your hand can reach up your ass because that is very similar to the plot of Squid Games. Okay, maybe not the fatal brutality part, but all those people who competed had the free will to nope the f out of there at one point or another to never return back to the game, but they came back anyways. They would rather risk everything than to go back to their impoverished, 
horrible lifestyle and Jake was one of those people who was inherently poor and was heavily pressured by Mr. Beast to compete in these lab rat experiments for huge lumps of life changing money, which is messed up on all sorts of levels because Jimmy promised this guy this challenge to be a relaxing breeze up until the last few days. And I had a little bit of change in my pocket, you know, the most change I had in my pocket ever, you know, small potatoes. Yeah, compared to beast bullshit, but you know, I thought I had enough to to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, get, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, "Hey, they want you for a video." I was like, "Oh, amazing, great, cool, thank God." Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, they, what, what's the video? And they tell me the print, the pitch, and they, they they try to make the pitch sound like it's gonna be like a walk in the park. Be bad for the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first. It's gonna be like a breeze for most of it, and uh, by the end of it, after thirty days, you're gonna get. $300,000, because it's $10,000 a day. And I don't know, man. I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, blah, 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 excuse me? You, I'll yell dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. I mean, this is probably something many of you could relate to, having to suck it up for a shitty employer in order to pay your bills or not sleep out in the streets. With Jake's line of work, he couldn't immediately just go looking for something that even comes close to the amount Mr. Beast was offering him. Now, that's not all Jake would suffer from, though, because he shared another competition that happened in that video where Mr. Beast pressured Jake to run an entire marathon for an additional prize during the solitary challenge. Jake, obviously, with the extreme pressure of being Mr. Beast's personal fleshlight felt obligated to get fucked over once again because they knew Jake would obey their every command if they dangled money in front of his face and this was the final straw that broke the camel toes crack for Jake because this event would be the direct cause of him entirely quitting the challenge after day 10. He also says Mr. Beast would deflect all the blame onto Jake for the agony he was having him undergo saying he was going to lose so much money in time if Jake didn't simply run the easy 26 miles like any other normal person would totally do. Who the hell does Mr. Beast hang out with in his free time? I'm David Goggins? I don't know a single soul that can just sprint an entire marathon like it's your average Sunday stroll. I think most professional athletes need weeks at least of training before competing in one, which is why afterwards Jake's foot looked like a Flood Army soldier from Halo due to how many blisters and bunions he had on his feet from running nonstop for hours with very small breaks. He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. You're gonna do the two... 22.6k, whatever it is, and you're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. People who run marathons train forever, and it's still hard. Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice, or? There was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You, then you get up, and I, if, if I refuse, it's just, well, that's the whole video, I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames, because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. All right, I got off the treadmill. Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe, just all over, just these big red, I couldn't, I couldn't walk, my, my, my muscles were like, just, the, the lactic acid, I, I, I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like, ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good, then that's when I was like, I'm done, I can't, I'm done, I'm done, I'm out. Mr. Beast has went out of his way to fake timers, give people hours worth of breaks before, so why was this scenario so different? Did Weddle pipe his mom and take custody of him? Because it really seems like Mr. Beast has some personal vendetta against Jake for years now to throw this dude like a wild animal in the cage for his own sick amusement. Now, I'll mention that Weddle did get paid for taking part of this, actually getting over 100000 for the 11 days he managed to survive there. Realistically, after taxes, probably like 60,000. However, the money still doesn't justify the false advertising Beast gave Jake from the very beginning that misled him into believing this would be some sort of fun little challenge. And it only turned dark or difficult in the last few days to really put his mind to the test. Not to be a straight inferno of hell from the very start with the lighting system being brighter than King Neptune's forehead and the aroma of that room to be the equivalent of a cow's anus. I mean, the way I see it is if this guy can rent million dollar hotel rooms and play real life raft wars with different yachts, then there's no reason whatsoever Jimmy couldn't have at least rented a place with a skylight he could have opened or closed, just the bare minimum of letting this man see sunlight because not even federal prisons would allow somebody to not get at least an hour of fresh air every day. There's more text messages Jake would exchange right after the challenge was over, going over the physical and psychological trauma his body is currently recovering from. I'm not going to read all of it, but one thing Jake says is they lied about caring for his mental health, almost admitting right to his face that they didn't want him to sue them for everything they'd done to him. Part of me wants the footage burned and part of me thinks that there's a great horror cut in there. LMAO, he was so fake when he came in and said he cared about my mental health. They must have programmed the care about mental health updates. Uh, he said, we also don't want you to, s and I swear to our Lord and Savior, he stopped himself from saying sue. Also, as far as like, he could have said no, he could have left at any time. I wanna show the segment from uh, an internal document at Mr. Beast called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. 
Specifically on page 19, there's a paragraph called, no does not mean no. No does not mean no. I mean, if Activision wrote this, I wouldn't put that shit past me. But for Mr. Beast to have this insane policy on his team for the world's biggest YouTube channel is a horrible look for the company. For a TLDR, Mr. Beast would want his employees to force their way into any location to film, whether the owner wants them to or not. And if they didn't end up getting a place to film or couldn't do these impossible tasks Mr. Beast was offering them, then they wouldn't really succeed on the Mr. Beast team. Next, Jake would go over the past lore that led him to get fired from Mr. Beast in the first place in 2019, I believe, where he finally wanted to get paid more for the insane amount of work he was doing as a writer there. He marched into the office with another co-worker who really didn't want to poke the bear in any of this, but was there behind Jake's back to give him a slightly better pay. Well, our humble hero Jimmy decided to fire both of them the next day, where Jake heavily admits he regretted after learning his co-worker would be let go with him. I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just... I like my job. I like my job because when you, when, you, when you grow up with you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like if that's like, I, you know, I trust you. I he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew... If I knew he was gonna lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. If it was any other corporation besides the one that bases itself off of helping people, I could perfectly see this happening. Because I think the last thing many bosses tend to care about is your personal feelings. Jimmy, on the other hand, was marketing himself to be different, and this is how he treats his staff for just wanting a better pay. Lastly, the thing I'll touch up on is an alleged sexual misconduct that Jake Weddle has heard over the years that has happened at Mr. B's Studios, which Dogpack says he will get much into in his part three on Jimmy. Did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct of company. I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk, but I've heard things. Yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for assaulting some very young people. I mean, we're gonna have to start putting this shit into movie phases. Really hyped to see what Dogpack has in store for us next, but with an already known offender being confirmed by three former employees now to be on the team, I wouldn't put it past me that Delaware wasn't the first of the many corrupt people Jimmy throws in behind the scenes. I'm hoping some parents wise up and reconsider who their kids watch because this just proves even the people that are supposed to be the safest was directly putting children in harm's way. I probably sound like a broken record, so I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Make sure to slap a like on this vid before your dad's slaps you subscribe to hit my vibe and follow all my socials the links will be down below especially my instagram i'm getting really close to 7k so make sure y'all run that up with that being said i'll update you guys on the news that drops with dog packs part three so make sure to sub to this channel and yeah i will see you all very soon i i'm gonna head out this bit